have heard of the condition dyscalculia. It's a persistent difficulty understanding numbers. Yeah, it means trying to do math is a problem, obviously, but that's not all. It can affect you in a whole variety of ways. For example, people with a condition can find it difficult to process long numbers. It can make it hard to read maps, to follow directions and to tell the time on a clock. Scotland has now adopted an official definition of dyscalculia, which will help provide support for children with the learning difference. One expert has said it's important to raise awareness. Dyscalculia and math difficulties is, if you like, the poor relation of special needs education. It's uh, not very well widely known by the general public, uh, but also by teachers and parents alike. So we're hoping that this will make sure that it comes across and people are able to identify and pick up the, uh, the initial problems that uh, the children might be having in school and in the classroom, so that we're able then to put in place a focused intervention plan. Well, for people with the condition, it can be a real problem in all sorts of areas of life, as you can imagine. And one person who knows all about it is Josie Duncan, who we met earlier. I think I remember as far back as primary two, struggling with numbers. We had homework once to count backwards from 20 and show the class the next day. And I was up all night and I just couldn't do it. Um, but I was entering a singing competition at the time. So my mum wrote a letter to the teacher. And when it came around to my turn, I just sung my song. Um, nobody minded because we were seven, but they had no context, so I was lucky that my teacher listened to the note, but I didn't know why I wasn't able to do it. And you weren't diagnosed with dyscalculia until after you'd left school, so you went the whole way through school just with everybody, what, thinking you She's were bad at maths? terrible at maths, which is true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it wasn't until I was at uni where they offer free testing. Um, someone came to speak to my year group and spoke about this, and I thought, that sounds a lot like me. I think I'll go for that, and then... Um, Actually, in my, in my test, the diagnostic test, uh, me and the woman were laughing because I could hear how simple the questions were, but I couldn't answer them. And she said, people always either laugh or cry, so I'm glad you're laughing. Oh, and what difference did having a diagnosis make then? Did everything suddenly make sense to you when you learned yeah. that there was a name you could put to this? Having a name is very validating. Um, it opens up a world, especially now in the age of the internet, a world online where you can connect with people. And once you have a name, you know what to you know what to look up, and you know how you can tell people what's going on. So, uh, this is more than just not being very good at maths, right? Mm -hmm. Not being able to do sums. This is all sorts of problems in everyday life. I mean, numbers are everywhere, aren't they? And yeah. you, you particularly notice that because you find them difficult. So, what kind of problems does it present to you in, in, in going through your life? Timetables, clocks, those are the two big ones. Anything to do with numbers, our world is full of numbers. Public transport, you're always having to read timetables. Um, so yeah, it can be tricky, especially when it comes to 24 hour digital, that's often a huge challenge for people with dyscalculia. And in practical terms as well, you, you, you had an issue, I think, uh, at the end of a meal, right? Yeah, I went to tip 10%, but I added an extra zero on tip to 100. And I was too scared Happy to say waiter or waitress. I know, they just thought they thought that I was either rolling it or lovely, which I'll take, but um, <laughs> no, it was just an honest mistake. And have you managed to come up with coping mechanisms and shortcuts and, you know, how do you get around this? Is it just a case sometimes of actually asking for help if you're struggling? Yeah, I've learned more and more that when you ask, people are willing to help you. Having a name is so helpful for that, though, because when you're just saying, oh, I find this hard and this and they all seem unrelated, um, it's really tied together when you have that name. So I do think it's worth having a diagnosis. And there'll be people watching this, uh, Josie, thinking that sounds like me. Well, what other what symptoms? should people look out for? Struggling with maths is the biggest one. Yeah. Um, often people will learn their left and right later in life. And also just, you can't estimate numbers. So I couldn't even tell you how much a house would cost. I have no idea. Um, or a car. Just any estimation with numbers is completely over your head, completely arbitrary. And do you think it would have helped to have learned about this younger when you were at school? What kind of a difference do you think that might have made to your education? Definitely, I think it would have helped. For me, um, I'm a musician, so there's a lot of counting involved in music. And it was so frustrating to find that hard. I had musical theory lessons one on one for years and I would learn it there and overnight it was wiped clean and I would get so annoyed at myself. So it would have been great to know why that was happening. That's the whole issue, I guess, of, of diagnosis, isn't it? Nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely, and you know why it's happening. It's not an excuse, it's a reason, which is really good. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff, isn't it, Josie? Thank you so much no indeed worries. for uh, letting us know a bit more about dyscalculia and uh, how it affects you. Lovely to meet me. you. <laughs>